ಕ್ಯಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಯಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರನ್ ಮಿಳಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀನಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚತಾಯ ದೀಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿಗೋ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ವಿಷಯ ವಿನಿವರ್ತನೆ ನಿರಾಹಾರ ದೇಹಿ ರಸಾವರ್ಜಂ ರಸೋಪ್ಯ ಪರಂ ದೃಷ್ಟ ನಿವರ್ತೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ so now we are on the final section of this second chapter where arjuna have asked four questions to lord shri krishna in text number 54 and we are reading answers of lord shri krishna to those questions translation to text 59 though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment the taste for sense object remains but seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste is fixed in consciousness <clears throat> purport unless one is transcendently situated it is not possible to cease from sense enjoyment the process of restriction from sense enjoyment by rules and regulation is something like restricting a deceased person from certain types of eatables the patient however neither likes such restrictions nor loses his taste for eatables similarly sense restriction by some spiritual process like ashtang yoga in the matter of yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahara dhyana dhyana etc is recommended for less intelligent persons who have no better knowledge but one who has tasted the beauty of the supreme lord in the course of his advancement in krishna consciousness no longer has a taste for dead material things therefore restrictions are there for the less intelligent neophytes and the spiritual advancement of life but such restrictions are only good until one actually has a taste for krishna consciousness when one is actually krishna conscious he automatically loses his taste for pale things what propada is trying to indicate here is just like we have this four regulatory principles no meat eating no intoxication no gambling and no illicit sex uh which is very very attractive to the mundane wranglers of this world uh to any any living entity outside you will see them they're fully absorbed into poor things however propada is saying once we begin to develop taste in krishna consciousness we lose taste in these things uh the moment we have got taste for krishna prasada now those who used to eat meat meat before i can't imagine they even thinking of eating meat even in their dreams now yes or no similarly intoxication you know i know at least onion and garlic even people now cannot devotees now cannot even tolerate the smell of onion garlic probably they would have lived with onion garlic all through their life this is what is a result of param drishtva nivartate and of course meat eating intoxication gambling is uh you know uh, doable is doable the one thing which where we really struggle is the fourth principle that takes a while because that is the highest sense gratification in this world but uh the, all the hope is there that's the point proper is saying when we become krishna conscious all this thing goes away so now we don't have to remind every day ourselves what are the four regular principles today i'm going to follow how many if you recite that mantra no that's it we do it there's no question of breaking it that's the point proper is saying text number 60 
यतो हि का विपश्यता इंद्रिया प्रमाथीनी हरती प्रशभम मण The senses are so strong and impetuous, Arjuna, that they forcibly carry away the mind, even of a man of discrimination who is endeavouring to control them. Papa, the many learned sages, philosophers, and transcendentalists who try to conquer the senses, but in spite of their endeavours, even the greatest of them sometimes fall victim to mental sense enjoyment due to the agitated mind. Even Vishwamitra, a great sage and a perfect yogi, was misled by Manika into sex enjoyment. Although the yogi was endeavouring for sense control, received the types of penance in yoga practice, and of course there are so many similar instances in the history of the world. Therefore, it is very difficult to control the mind and senses without being fully Krishna conscious. Papa didn't say without being Krishna conscious. Papa said without being fully. The fully has been used. Pay attention to that because that is a word which is often missed. We say we are Krishna conscious. No, are you fully Krishna conscious? That's the point. Without engaging the mind in Krishna, one cannot see such material engagements. A practical example is given by Sri Yamuna Acharya. Yada vadi mama chet Krishna padar vinde inna vana varasadham yudhi tam rantumasit tada vadi vadanari sangamesmar yamane bhavati mukha vikaraha shushtu. Since my mind has been engaged in the service of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, I have been enjoying an ever new transcendental humor. Whenever I think of sex life with a woman, my face at once turns from it, and I spit at the thought. Krishna consciousness is such a transcendently nice thing that automatically mental enjoyment becomes distasteful. It is as if a hungry man had. Satisfied his hunger by a sufficient quantity of nutritious eatables. What a beautiful analogy! So, how we become disgusted from material sense gratification? Proper example, just like a hungry man who has been satisfied with nice eatable. If you feed him more, he'll become disgusted. That's the point. He's fully satisfied, like that. Maharaj Amrish also conquered a great yogi, Durvasa Muni, simply because his mind was engaged in. Krishna conscious, savai mana Krishna padar vinti or vacham sivai kunta gunanu varanani. Text number 61. So text number 60 talks about the mind and senses are very difficult to control, but it's only possible by Krishna consciousness. Text number 61. Tani sarvani samyam ya yukta asita matparaha vashehi yasindriyani tasya pragna pratishtata. One who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control, and fixes his consciousness upon me, is known as a man of steady intelligence. Purport: The highest conception of yoga perfection is Krishna consciousness, and one is unless one is Krishna conscious, it is not at all possible to control the senses. And then Purport gives an example of the Vasa Munis and Maharaj a uh, quarrel with Maharaj Amrish. Durvasa Muni had unnecessarily become angry with Maharaj Amrish, and he had plucked his hair, and from that he had produced a demon who he had ordered to kill Maharaj Amrish. But Maharaj Amrish could not be agitated and disturbed even at the face of death. Why? That's the reason Prabhupada is raising this point. Uh, Prabhupada quotes his beautiful verses: "Savai mana Krishna padara vindayo vasham sivai kunta guna nubarnani." Karau hari mandira marjana dishu, shuti chakara chuta sat kato dahe, mukunda linga ledashane drasho, tad vritya gatra spashe anga sangamam, granam chatat pada saroja saurabhe, shimat tulasya rasanam tadarpite, pada o hari sheta padano sarpane, Shiro Rishi Kesha Padha Bivandane Kamam Chadase Natu Kama Kamaya Yathutta Mashloka Janashraya Ratihi King Amrish fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna, engaged his word in describing the abode of the Lord, his hands in cleansing the temple of the Lord, his ears in hearing the pastimes of the Lord, his eyes in seeing the form of the Lord, his body in touching the body of the devotee, his nostrils in smelling the flower of the flowers offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, his tongue in tasting the tulsi leaves offered to him, 
his legs in traveling to the holy place where temple is situated his head in offering up his senses to the lord and his desires and fulfilling the desires of the lord and all these qualifications made him fit to become matpara devotee of the lord the word matpara is most significant in this connection matpara word is actually spoken by lord shri krishna how one can become matpara which means dear to the lord my matpara means my devotee it is described in the life of amrish Shila Balde Vidyabhushan, a great scholar and child in the line of the Matpara, means the great devotees, remarks, Madhbhakti Prabhavina Sarvendri Vijaya Purvika Swatma Drashti Sulabheti Bhavaha. The senses can be completely controlled only by the strength of devotional service to Krishna. Also, the example of fire is sometimes given. As a blazing fire burns everything within a room, Lord Vishnu, situated in the heart of the yogi, burns up all kinds of impurities. This is chapter number 10, verse number 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, not 12, 11 verse. The Yoga Sutra also prescribes meditation on Vishnu, not meditation on the void. The so-called yogis who meditate on something other than Vishnu simply waste their time in a vain search after some phantasmagoria. We have to be Krishna conscious, devoted to the personality of Godhead, this is the aim of the real yoga. Text number 62, 63, classical verses of Bhagavad Gita. Dhyayato vishayatum sasangaste supajayate sangasanjayate kamaha kamat krodo bijayate. Next, kroda bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibrama smriti vramasad buddhinasho buddhinashat pranashyati. Uh, what are the stages that leads to our fall down? That is being described in these two verses. Text number 62 translation. While contemplating the object of the senses, our stages of fall on begins with contemplation. A person develops attachment for them, and from such attachment, lust develops, and from lust, anger arises. Translation 63. From anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. And when memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, and when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. So this is called as relapse. If we have had a fall down or relapse where we got into our bad habits again, then this is what happens. First begins with the contemplation of the objects of the senses. With that, we develop attachment or attraction. You can say attraction actually. And then that attraction becomes into attachment where I want it. And then comes krodha, anger. From anger comes delusion. Delusion leads to bewilderment of memory, loss of memory. Loss of memory leads to loss of intelligence, and once intelligence is lost, and then pranashyati, person falls down. These are the things. In essence of this discussion, if we want to save ourselves from fall down, uh, the best way to protect ourselves is the, at the very first step, contemplation. If we don't watch wrong things, if we don't hear about dirty subject matters or the wrong subject matters, if we don't taste uh, non-prasad, then this situation would not arise. Out of sight, out of mind, right? As they say in English, if you don't see it, you don't get that thing doesn't go into your mind and you know. So for those of you who are youngsters, I would strongly request you, urge you, it's very critical in today's day and time to have parental controls on your devices. If you are a parent, I would urge you to have parental control for your kids, uh, even if they're 10 year old, because Today, there's a lot of contamination, dirty stuff on the internet. Make sure you keep a watch on their social media activities and on internet activities. Because if once they become trapped into this whole illusory world of the internet, coming out is very difficult. It takes a lot of endeavor. Pornography is so easily available. People don't have food to eat, but they have pornography to watch. Even a beggar on the street can watch pornography. He may not have a three times food or two times food to eat. Why? A 4G. Reliance Jew, pre-internet. Hotspots are put everywhere. You know, and if some rich guy had given you a smartphone in charity, you can do all the misuse. And all of you are socially aware this much that what trouble this can brought in. So please take care of that. Puppet 62. One is not in Krishna consciousness, subjected to material desires while contemplating the objects of the senses. The senses require real engagements, and if they are not engaged in the transcendent loving service of the Lord, they will certainly seek engagement in the service of materialism. In the material world, everyone, including Shiva and Brahma, to say nothing about the demigods, is subjected to the influence of sense objects. 
And the only method to get out of this puzzle of material existence is to become Krishna conscious. Shiva was in deep meditation when pra Parvati agitated him for sense pressure. He agreed. While when Haridas Sakura was a young devotee of the Lord, he was similarly allured by the incarnation of Maya. But Haridas easily passed the test because of his unalloyed devotion to Krishna. As illustrated in the above mentioned verse of Sri Yamunacharya, uh, Yadavati, which we just read previously, uh, since the devotee of the Lord shuns all material sense enjoyment due to his higher taste for spiritual enjoyment and the association of the Lord, that is the secret of success. If you want to develop a higher taste, the easiest way to develop higher taste is uh, practicing Krishna consciousness in the association of devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to give us what? What is the known? What is what is the uh, panacea for Kali Yuga? What is the solution? What is that? Say it loudly. Harinam? Are you sure? Not Kirtan? Sure, Sankirtan? Yes, Sankirtan. It's not Kirtan. Kirtan means to chant by yourself. Sankirtan means in the association of devotees. If you are not in the association of devotees, I don't know how you, do. you can really practice Krishna Kajan and develop higher taste. So this whole thing due to his higher taste for spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord, I would like to add in the association of the devotees. Only then we develop the higher taste and then we develop, understand the association of the Lord. One who is not therefore in Krishna consciousness, however powerful he may be in controlling the senses by artificial repression, is sure ultimately to fail. For the slightest thought of sense pleasure will agitate him to gratify his desire. You don't want to try it out, but it really works. If so just a thought of sense gratification enters your mind and you have been repressing and controlling it, the mind will go crazy. So much so it will go crazy, the symptoms of craziness would manifest in your body physically. Either it manifests in the form of anger or it, forms, or it manifests in the form of the pain points. Body will generate pain points, different parts of the body will begin, begin to pain because the desire which is an energy has got accumulated and you have to vent it out. Somewhere it has to be. Be very careful. Text number 63 purport. Srila Rupa Goswami has given us this direction. Prapanchikataya hari sambandhi vasunaha mumukshubihi pratigyago vairagyam falgu katyate. By development of Krishna consciousness, one can know that everything has its use in the service of the Lord. Those who are without knowledge of Krishna consciousness artificially try to avoid material objects. And as a result, although they desire liberation from material bondage, they do not attain to the perfect stage of renunciation. The so-called renunciation is Falgu. Falgu is the name of a river in Gaya, fake river. On the other hand, a person in Krishna consciousness knows how to use everything in the service of the Lord. Therefore, he does not become <coughs> a victim of material consciousness. For example, for an impersonalist, the Lord of the Absolute being impersonal cannot eat. Whereas an impersonal tries to avoid good eatables, the devotees know that Krishna is a supreme enjoyer and that he eats all that is offered to him in devotion. Propan means vegetarian, right? Huh? So after offering good eatables to the Lord, the devotee takes a remnant called prasadam. Thus everything becomes spiritualized and there is no danger of a downfall. The devotee takes prasadam in Krishna consciousness, whereas the non devotee rejects it as material. The impersonalist therefore cannot enjoy life due to his artificial renunciation, and for this reason, a slight agitation of the mind pulls him down again into the pool of material existence. It is said that such a soul, even though rising up to the point of liberation, falls down again due to his not having supported devotional service. One thing the practicing devotee should really, really take care of that they should only eat prasadam and try their best if prasadam is also being cooked only by devotees. Not that it's been cooked by non-devotees and you offer and call it prasadam. Why? Because prasadam is nothing but again a transformation of energy. Now there is a gross energy connected with it and there's a subtle energy. Gross energy is the food that you have. From vegetables it has taken a shape of, uh, let's say a sabji. But along with that there's a subtle energy connected with it. What is the subtle energy? The thought process of the person who had cooked it. So when you take that food, you're not only taking that gross energy, which transforms into the body. What is the body? But nothing but the heap of food that you have eaten. It gets accumulated. Why are you raising in size? Somebody is fed, which means he eats a lot. That's a fair enough assumption. We say the very first thing. So the body is a heap of thought. The mind is a heap of thoughts. So when you accept a food, two things happen. You collect the food and turns into a body. And you also collect the subtle energy coming along with it, which sits on your head. 
So heap of thought and heap of food, therefore has to be very careful. If you're eating from non-devotee's hand, there's no question of you being spiritual. We cannot. Fall down is compulsory. Text number 54. Ragadvesha vimaktes tu vishayan indriyas charan atma vashir vidhi atma prasadam adhikachyati. Translation. But a person free from all attachment and aversion, able to control his senses through regular principles of freedom, can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Day before yesterday, when I was speaking about yesterday or day before yesterday, about the football field, this is that. Puppet. It is already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process. But unless the senses are engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is every chance of a fall. Although the person in full Krishna consciousness may apparently be on the sensual plane, because of his being Krishna conscious, he has no attachment to sensual activities. The Krishna conscious person is concerned only with the satisfaction of Krishna and nothing else. Therefore, he is transcendental to all attachment and detachment. If Krishna wants, the devotee can do anything which is ordinarily undesirable. And if Krishna does not want, he shall not do that which he would have ordinarily done for his own satisfaction. Therefore, to act, not to act is within his control because he acts only under the direction of Krishna. This consciousness is the causeless mercy of the Lord, which the devotee can achieve in spite of his being attached to the sensual platform. Text number 65. Prasade Sarva Dukkana. This is a favorite verse of all the devotees. When the class is going longer, this is the verse which begins to ring. Prasade Sarva Dukkhanam. Are you coming Prasad? Prasade Sarva Dukkhanam. Hane Asyo Pajayate. Prasanna Cheta Soyashu Buddhihi Paryavatishtate. For one thus satisfied in Krishna consciousness, the three four miseries of mental existence exist no longer. In such satisfied consciousness, one's intelligence is soon well established. Text number 66 and 67. What happens to one who is not connected with the Supreme? Text number 64 and 65 spoke about what happens to those who are connected with Supreme. They are able to rise above all uh, dualities of this world. Sukha and Dukha. But what happens to those who are not in union with the Lord. Text number 66 and 67 talks about it. Nasti yuktasya bhavana nacha bhavyantaha shanti ashantasya kutaha sukham One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna Consciousness. Ayuktasya. Yukta means engaged. Yukta also means connected. Ayuktasya, which is not engaged in the service of the Lord can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind. Without which there is no possibility of peace. So people ask me, how do we develop focus? I say, render service to the Lord. Your mind becomes steady, fixed. Our unsteadiness is because of material desires, which keeps pulling us in different, different directions. When we don't have material desires, or even if we have material desires, but we don't have attraction to it, focus automatically comes. That's it. That's the point here. And when you have focus, when the mind becomes steady, then we get peace. So Krishna says, if you're not connected with the Lord, there's no question of peace. There's no question of transcendental intelligence, no question of steady mind. And then how can there be any happiness without peace? Therefore, you see all the city dwellers, all their, their big heavy wallet with their uh, face, sorry to say, sometimes look like a dog. Why a dog? Have you seen a dog? He's always barking, which means always looks angry. That's all the city dwellers. Even have everything, but they never smile only. Mm. But they never return back a smile. They think like as if we'll steal their smile. So this is a dark consciousness actually. Always angry, always frustrated. Purpose. Unless one is in Krishna consciousness, there is no possibility of peace. It is confirmed in the fifth chapter, verse number 29. When one understands Krishna is the only enjoyer of all the good results of sacrifice and penance, that he is the proprietor of all universal manifestation, that he is the real friend of all living entities, then only can one have real peace. Therefore, if one is not in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be a final goal for the mind. Disturbance is due to want of an ultimate goal. And when one is certain that Krishna is an enjoyer, proprietor, friend of everyone and everything, then one can, with a steady mind, bring about peace. 
Why we are so disturbed? Because we want to be enjoyer, proprietor, controller. And what is the problem in we becoming the enjoyer, proprietor, controller? There's no problem. The only problem is all of us are trying to become it. And because all of us are trying to become it, the competition is very tough. And when there is a competition, can you sit peacefully? Not at all. And Krishna also does not help you. Why would he encourage competition? So you don't get help from top and nobody is around you to help you. Even your family members are competitors for you. So there is no trustworthy person. Therefore, person remains so disturbed, so disturbed, so disturbed. Therefore, one who is engaged without a relationship with Krishna is certainly always in distress and without peace. However, much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life. You have seen people, they come out and they smile. Oh, oh wonderful, wonderful. Have you seen? People when they come out, you know, they, if you ask them, how are you? Oh, everything, all good, all fine. Have you ever heard somebody tell you, oh, life is very miserable. But you go and live with them, you'll understand how miserable their life is. They come out and then show as if everything is wonderful. Like simple example, the Hollywood, Bollywood stars. They come in front of the cameras, they stand like this and that. And big smile and, you know, family picture, different poses. And on the backside, they are fighting. And that's the reason next you get news. They divorced. Are you so smile kar tha. I divorced again. Okay. That is what, this is what the fakeness purpose is talking about it. However much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness is a self-manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with Krishna. Text number 67. Indriyanam icharatam yanmano anuvidyate tadasya harati pragnyam vayunavam ivam. So what happens when you're not connected to Krishna? As a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. So easy for a person to get distracted. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says, Yasya si bhakti bhagavati yakinchana sarve gune satra samasata suraha harava bhaktasya kuto mahat guna mano rathe na siddhavato bhai Jo man ke rath par baith ke dhod raha hai, us pe kabhi bhi vishwas mat karna. This is a shloka. Why? Because that fellow, the horse is represented by the senses, can pull him into any direction. How much ever he or she may promise you, I'm going to be loyal, I'm going to be truthful to you. But the senses are so strong, we are helpless, we're sitting on a chariot which is out of our control. Imagine you're driving a car, driving a car but the brakes fails and it is running at the speed of 80 km per hour. What can you do now? It's out of your control. That is what is the state of the subtle mind of an, uh, uh, not subtle mind, is a case of a subtle body of an individual who is not in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Prabhupada used to say, never trust a non-devotee and trust carefully a devotee. Don't trust blindly. <laughs> All right? But unless all of the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, even one of them engaged in sense gratification can deviate the devotee from the path of transcendental advancement. As mentioned in the life of Maharaj Amrish, all of the senses must be engaged in Krishna consciousness for that is the correct technique for controlling the mind. Text number 68. Oh, great. We are to the conclusion. Tasma jasya mahabaho nigritani sarvashaha indriyan indriyate bhyas tasya prajna pratishtata. Now, Lord Sri Krishna is concluding his Bhagavad Gita for Krishna. Bhagavad Gita is ending. It is only Arjun who really started it. If Arjuna would not have asked the question, Krishna gave everything what he had to give. So now Krishna is making the last statements. How to attain peace, the peace formula. Text number 68. Therefore, you see conclusion? Therefore, O mighty armed, one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence. Krishna is repeating that point again. Huh? In this section, this has twice been repeated. If your senses are in, uh, you know, restrained, how your senses are restrained when they're engaged in Krishna consciousness. If you speak Krishna Katha, would you feel like speaking Prajalpa? Because you've already exhausted your quota of speaking, isn't it? <laughs> what should you say? If you eat Krishna Prasadam, would you eat non Prasadam? You have exhausted your quota of eating Prasadam. That's all. So exhaust your senses, make them tired in serving Krishna. There's no potential or time to serve Maya. That's the simple formula. Puppet. One can come to the forces of sense gratification only by means of Krishna consciousness or engaging all the senses in the transcendent loving service of the Lord. As enemies are curbed by spiritual superior forces, the senses can similarly be curbed not by, please mark it, huh? not by any human endeavor, but only by keeping them, keeping them engaged in the service of the Lord. 
One who has understood this, that only where Krishna consciousness is one really established in intelligence. And that one should practice this art under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master is called a sadhaka or a suitable candidate for liberation. Just like we have these eight prayers glorifying spiritual masters, different different aspects, how he becomes very happy when he sees devotees engaged in service of the Lord, how he becomes happy when he sees devotees serving the deities, eating prasadam, everything. I would like to add one more line. Similarly, the spiritual master becomes very pleased when he sees new sadhakas totally exhausted and tired in serving Krishna. They cannot sit straight also in the class, which is a good sign, which means they have enough services. Because they didn't have service, they'll be relaxed, sitting comfortably. But they're struggling to sit and they're struggling to stay awake in the japa is a very good sign for a sadhaka, which means he's properly engaged. Not a bad sign, don't think like that. And in the formative years in Krishna consciousness, it's extremely important that we be in that situation because that's how our senses will come under control. Text number 69. Yanisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagrati samyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sana shapashato munehe. What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. Krishna definitely knows past, present, future. This was gave me 200% confidence, right? Uh, the outside people go to sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning, whole night they party. And we wake up at four o'clock. Agreed or not? See, Krishna is a supreme person. This was definitely proves his supreme. <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. This was this was a culture back there in those days in Mahabharat, you know, time. But how effectually his uh, Krishna is making a point. Purport: There are two classes of intelligent men. One is intelligent mental activities for sense gratification. Other is introspective and awake to the cultivation of self-realization. Activities of the introspective stage, the thoughtful man, are night for persons mentally absorbed. So he said, what are you doing? What are you doing? He doesn't do sense gratification. The introspective sage remains to their ignorance. The introspective sage remains alert in the night of the metallistic man. The sage feels transcendent pleasure and the gradual advancement of spiritual culture, whereas the man in metal activity is being asleep to self-realization, dreams of varieties of sense pleasure, feeling sometimes happy, sometimes distressed, and a sleeping condition. The introspective sage or man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and distress, which means he is willing to undergo any austerity for the mind and the body. That's what it means. And what about the conditioned living entities? They just want all the comfort and convenience for their body and mind. So if you are conscious of giving comfort to the body and mind, then you're not a sadhaka in that sense. Sadhaka means is willing to sacrifice the comforts of the body and mind for the sake of practicing Krishna consciousness. So externally we have taken to the process, but internally we are still materialist because why? We're looking for comfortable living, comfortable lifestyle. That's the point here. Uh -huh. The introspective man is always indifferent. We read it. He goes on with the self-realization activities undisturbed by material reactions. Text number 7071. What is the nature of self-realized soul? Yes. Apuryamanam achala pratishtam samudram apa pravishanti advar tadvat kamaya pramishanti sarve sashanti maapnoti na kama kami. Beautiful, beautiful verse. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still. Right? It sounds like a rhyme which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone, uh, can alone achieve peace. And not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. So tolerance, tam tichikshva bharata, where do we have to apply tolerance? We have to apply tolerance here. Senses will get agitated, desires would be there. We have to, ex we have to exercise tolerance in not fulfilling the whims of our mind. Puppet. Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is, all, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. The mind of a sage is like that. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness, which means desires will continue to come, but that will not disturb a Krishna conscious person. As long as one has a metal body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will. So don't ask a question. 
When will I get freed from these desires? Ask a question, can I be engaged in service? That is what's gonna make us steady. As long as we have a material body, the desires will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. Fullness in what? Happiness in serving Krishna. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the river that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities and is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. He can remain steady like the ocean and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, want to fulfill desire even up to the limit of liberation. What to speak of material success never attain peace. The fruity workers, the salvationists, the yogis who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires and therefore they are in perfect peace. Hare Krishna. What a beautiful purpose. What a beautiful purpose. And what a beautiful verse actually. We'll pause for today over here with this discussion. We have two more shlokas to continue and then we'll start with chapter 3 tomorrow. So here we were discussing about Lord Sri Krishna answering Arjuna's four questions. I have not categorized the answers here. Um, maybe today I will request Vishwakaran Prabhu to share the recording of Gita Essence. There is a one hour lecture where you get the whole summary of the chapter and there you will have a presentation also where you will get uh, divisions of the chapter and all this uh, claims, counter claims over there. And plus you will have access to the PPT on the website. If you have signed up for the program on your student portal, you will see the presentations available for your review. With that, we pause here for today and wish to thank each and every one of you for joining us every day. I really didn't expect this to continue so long. I would have been better prepared my schedule next time. <laughs> I thought devotees will be or people will be excited after Gita Jayanti, after Gita Jayanti. When the festival is over, the event is over. So I thought maybe after festival, nobody will be there, but you all are continuing. I'll have to tweak my schedule around now. I have to make sure I keep coming in the mornings. So thank you, thank you so much. For continuing and we will continue studying Bhagavad Gita. Jagaduru Shila Prabhupada